<laughs> Welcome to another episode of Wee Sam's World. I'm your host, Wee Sam. You should know this by now. I would hope so. If you're new to the show, welcome. I am Wee Sam, and that is Peyton. Uh, Peyton is the producer on the show, and he also uh, talks every now and then in the intro. When and I then feel s- like it. Yeah, when you feel mm-hmm. like it. You know, he has a lot to do behind the scenes. But I got are- my days. I also like to interrupt Wee Sam uh, mid-sentence. It's one of my specialties. Now, guy, now, you looked so pissed at me. I did it again on accident. I'm so sorry about that. You can, you can talk now. <laughs> I'm about to lose my mind. <laughs> you know, I feel so comfortable around you that I can just do that. Yes. Like you're my brother. Yes. And that's what I would do with my brother. Yes. Like, uh, hi. Oops. Somebody messed up. <laughs> you know? Anyway, this is the show, and I love doing it. And I was going to say thank you for all your hard work, but, but no, I no, don't know. Is no. that mic stand doing okay? You know what? <laughs> if you're new to the show, I'm about to lose my mind on mic stands as well because they just keep breaking with me. They only break with me. This sucks because I, the first 15 minutes while I was here was trying to fix that mic stand because it just kept toppling over. And I, I guess I didn't do it. I thought I did. That, that knob does nothing. It oh, just, really? It does nothing now. Oh, that's good to know. It just that, keeps spinning in place. That's great to know all of our equipment is somewhat, you know, shady because that's what it feels like, even though it's top of the line and it's not Adobe's fault. It's not our fault. It's literally the way I think tech works sometimes. It just, it's got, it's got an expiration date. It does. It does. Real quick. We have had a bunch of new subscribers on our YouTube channel, which I'm super appreciative of everybody listening. Thank you for subscribing to the show. And if you're new, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. If you're listening on Adobe Radio, just go on down to YouTube, hit We Sam's World, and boom, subscribe to us. It goes a long way, helps us get more advertisers. And pretty soon, I don't know when, but pretty soon we're going to be doing another uh, gift card giveaway. And it's money. Money you can use on Amazon to buy whatever you'd like. And I think for the holidays, that'd be a good idea with Caron's episode. Yeah. I think we should do a bit where make We Sam laugh for next week. Actually, we're definitely going to do that. Um, And we'll tell Alexandra, our social media producer, that we're going to do that for next week. Let's do it. Um, Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts if you enjoy the show greatly as well. That helps us get up there in the algorithms. I know you guys hear that from every single YouTuber and podcaster, but if you enjoy the show, if we've brought you happiness, you take a couple minutes to do that. It goes a long way. Screenshot it or tweet at us that you did it, and we're like, hey, we respond back. Peyton doesn't because he's not on the internet anymore. I'll, I'll, I'll be back. He'll be back. I will be back. He'll be back. He's a little upset that Trump lost, so he's kind of like That's dealing right. with that. That's that you know me. You know Republican old me. Oh, shit. I from just, Oklahoma. I'm wearing red. Uh, we're wearing you're the wearing same red, thing. too. We're wearing yeah. red flannel. <laughs> the only difference is you're wearing a black shirt underneath. I'm the darker version. And you're wearing a black beanie. Oh, shit. <laughs> did we just notice this? Yes, we did. What an episode this is going to be. But I don't wear shoes with, like, zip-tie laces. These are Cam and shoes. Yes. And they are the best running like, shoes they are cool. and day-to-day shoes. Yeah, because but I like this thing. I, I, I feel like shoes. that Stop. function, they're, they're going to be like, oh, that's $100 extra just because it has that function. Maybe, but is it? It's worth it. Okay. I'm being serious. Yeah. I wear the I, – I bought two pairs – because I was like, I want a pair for when I go running and a pair day to day because I love not having shoelaces. I mean, I get it. I love it. I get it. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm okay. This is what happened last time with our guest today, Jacob Hopkins. We yes. ran into, of course, a technical error mm-hmm. on the show, which was super annoying because we had an amazing episode. Yeah. You can hear it still, but the, uh, the video is just gone. Yeah. We had some, some crazy, stupid thing happen with our equipment it was an it was a a crazy glitch and so we're happy to have him back in the studio we're happy that he came back so soon yeah yeah we really appreciate that and jacob hopkins is our guest if you don't know him he's a series regular on the goldbergs abc tv show he plays chad cramp on it great actor he's young but so mature for his age yes you also might recognize his voice as gumball from the amazing world of gumball which is an animated show hell yeah so, uh, I think that's about it. And I think our HelloFresh thing, I, listen, they didn't pay for this ad, but <laughs> I'm still telling people about it because yeah. we're going to do it again in December. Hey, if you go to HelloFresh and you type in the coupon code WESAM90, 
like 9-0, we Sam 9-0, you get 90 bucks off your order. That's not literally $90 free of free food. Jesus runs the company. Uh, what? Remember? Oh, yes. Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> Dude. I'm trying to do like our little inside joke, and we Sam just looks at me and goes, what? I totally forgot about it. Man. Come on. Not sorry. I know. Hey, I love you. I love you too. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Jacob Hopkins. You know who you remind me of? A young Matt Damon. Steve Buscemi. No, no. (laughs) Wow. No, sir. No. (laughs) A young Matt Damon. I get that a lot. Yeah? I get that. I get DiCaprio. Um, Oh, yeah, the eyes a little bit with DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) That's actually pretty close when he's doing... Jack Nicholson. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Except my nose just becomes like 10 times as big when I do that. No. Yeah. It does that scrunch thing, you know? Yeah. It's all about... It's in the eyebrows. Yeah. That's what he does in The Shining when he sees all those ghosts. He's like... Yeah. (sighs) Is this what you do... (laughs) Whenever you prep for roles, yeah. you look in the mirror. It's method just... acting. So what you have to do is you have to just stare in the mirror mm-hmm. in your trailer. And, um, you know, you, you've got your assorted booze, um, your fireball Molotovs and everything. And, and you just look straight into the mirror and you go like. <sighs> That's good. That's good, man. Are you old enough to drink? No. <laughs> You know how I know Uh-oh. that. You know how I know Fireball is because I was going shopping for Thanksgiving yesterday, and I saw that on the like the the, the booze section. I just mm-hmm. glanced over, and I was like, I'm gonna use that in a joke. Fireball. I'm not a big drinker, obviously, no. but it is the worst idea for a drink, in my opinion. It's very cinnamon. So I've been told. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Cinnamony. Cinnamony. Yeah. And uh, obviously, with the alcohol, it burns too. So yeah, yeah I don't understand that. I've, I've, I've Uzo. Sucks. My my uncle loves it. Yeah. I actually recently like you know remember last time I uh, I was on the next day I went to uh, Michigan to um be at my cousin's wedding. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, and my and that cousin her name is Eleni. Her uncle uh, or her dad, my uncle, loves Uzo. They're Greek, so Ooh. they they just they love Uzo, um, especially my uncle. Yeah. And he's like, here, try some. It's really good. And I have never tasted anything so minty and so acidic. <laughs> it was yours was minty? It's a licorice though, taste. It's 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 like a, a black licorice base yes. is what they use. And then it, but it's so weird. It's like really mm-hmm. minty and like it it burns. And I was like, "You know what? That's really bad." And uh and then my a couple of my cousins were like, they're old enough to drink. Mm-hmm. And they're like, let's do Uzo shots. And I did one. I was like, this sucks. Yeah. I'm not doing this. No, no, no. no. You, you, you know, <laughs> I remember taking my first shot and I was, I used to love the smell of alcohol more than actual alcohol. I just, I just don't like it. I just don't have it. I, maybe it's that I don't have an acquired taste, but I just, I can't, you know? I don't like the taste. Whenever I tasted alcohol for the first time, I'm like, oh, that's why they call it alcohol. It burns. Yeah. That's, the alcohol is burning, and I'm like, that's not enjoyable to me. The yeah. smell is great, but the actual taste of it, I'm not a fan of. Um, you should try when you get old enough to drink, because I can't legally say it now. Um, beer. Certain types of like really light. like Corona. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I'm like microbrewery stuff. Oh, okay. Like handcrafted, like in small batches. Um, cause I think as you get older, your taste buds change. Yes. Corona's okay. It's, it's like, I'm outing myself as a hard no, drinker. No. <laughs> it's like literally the last time I took a sip of anything was like over no. a month ago. And then the last time before that yeah. was almost a year. Well, you were in England so. and Europe when you were doing all this. So that's fine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's when fine. I said Michigan, I meant France. So yeah, that's fine. It's a common Dude, mistake. Dude, we're covered, Jacob. It's fine. <laughs> like sweating art. Ever seen that Keen Peel skit where it's like, "Were you watching pornography? Porn? 
like porn? No, no, no. Pornography? <laughs> he just like a waterfall. Like that's he, a guess. Like like squirts going everywhere. Dude, that that's that is right one now. of the best sketch comedy shows of all time. I feel like Keen Peele's really really good. Yeah. Did you ever watch the original Chappelle show? Did the, the, the Wash Wash? The Chappelle show. The Chappelle show. Yeah. The original. Like Why the, do we treat the customers that way? I won't finish that joke because, <laughs> but I I love Dave Chappelle. Yeah, it's really freaking funny. He set the bar, hundred percent. Yeah, it was pretty amazing how he left kind of the business for that long period of time. Yeah, too. And, and then he came back on Netflix. Yeah, it's crazy. It's that's also an interesting question to kind of an end topic to transition into because. Knowing when to walk away is an interesting experience for any actor who's growing in this industry. Have you had any moments where you're like, ah, I can't do this job or, you know, maybe this isn't the best for, for me or, or even you took a job and you're like, oh man, I kind of wish, kind of wish I went a different direction. No, I don't think I faced that quite yet. I mean, I've been acting for like 13 years, but, um, I don't know. I feel like that comes... Late. I mean, there's certain, there were certain, of course, everyone faces where they get an audition. It's like, wow, I have to do that? No, nah, no, nah, I'm not going to audition for that. I faced that before. But I've never, like, gotten a role or an, and I was put in a, a bad situation. Or I've never had to face anything where I've had to walk away. I've been very fortunate to have really good experiences for the most part, um, especially being guided by parents who were actors before me, so they knew, like, oh. the ins and outs, um, you know, basically how to guide me through this adult world, because I started when I was five. Wow. Yeah, so I've always been very, very fortunate. Your parents were actors. That's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. Are they still acting? Not anymore. Um, my dad used to be an actor in the 90s. He played A.G. Cornemain on General Hospital. Oh, cool. Yeah, and then, and then even, like, before that, um, he trained in London at, like, various different academies, so... He was theatrically trained, and then he passed that on to me. Yeah. So, like, in a way, I'm kind of theatrically trained. But my mom was also an actor at that time, but she was more of a dancer. She would uh, tour on cruise ships and stuff. Um, like, she was major, major. She had, like, a full-ride scholarship for dance. And uh, you like that? I do. And, um, and, yeah, and it's, it's crazy because, like, it just it, – it's really funny. Like, the way I got into acting, if I had been with my dad, like, one fateful day running errands, I would not be here. We were uh, running errands together, and uh, I was five, and he was still acting at that time, and he stopped by his agents, and and they just looked over at me, and they're like, your son, like, does he want to act? You know, and I just shot out of my seat, and me being me, I was like, yeah, sure, what's acting? You know, no, no concept, no idea. And from there, um, became an actor. That's really great. Yeah. Very serendipitous. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pretend when I know what that means. Uh, is, it, is it going to the side again? Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Yes. These mic stands. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't even know what it means. Um, no, I'm kidding. Can you imagine? I'm just throwing out words. <laughs> wow. He's wow. so smart. <laughs> very photosynthesis of you. Yeah. Very photosynthesis. <laughs> That's the quote for the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we should title this. We should uh, we should title it that, but like in all caps, like all the really epic Minecraft YouTubers do, and like we should be like, "You play Minecraft the thumbnail?" Yeah. Do you? But I was being ironic. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh, yeah, I, I was thinking like after we're done, I'll just go home and watch like twenty hours of Ninja. You know. Yeah. Give a thousand dollars to Pokemon. That's insane. When I see people, is it? <laughs> oh, dude. I'm about to lose my damn mind. Here we go. I'm just watching it slip. We got this. This we got. Guys, guys, this is real, unedited. I'm not going to edit this out. We're raw. Here we go. Raw, unedited footage. Here we go. All right. Now. <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> yeah? Yes. Um... Do you play any video games? I forgot. Yeah, we talked yeah. about this last time. We talked about, I, I made fun of you a lot, but I promised I wasn't going to make fun of you for playing baby game Fortnite. I told myself I was not going to say that. See, um, so disrespectful, but go ahead. Listen. <laughs> go ahead. I do play a lot of games. I'm really into Call of Duty, like really into it right now because Warzone got me back in. I was out of it for like a long mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. I think I stopped around Black Ops 3. I was like, I don't know. It's just kind of the same. Wait, what about Cold Cold War's out right now? I'm into yes, that. Yes, that's right. Yes. Is it good? I'm Is full, it worth it? Dude, it's so good. The campaign okay. is 
really, really good. The zombies is freaking terrifying. Mm. Um, the first time I played it, though, I lagged a lot, so wasn't as scary. But then the second time, my computer's like, eh, I'm used to it now. I won't lag anymore. Yeah. I promise. You know what? I'm going to get it after Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I've been playing that on my PS5. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it. Yeah. Did it's you... really good. Okay. And multiplayer is very, very fun. Um, and they also have Warzone on it as well. So, th- like, they, they put that in the game just like um, oh. Modern Warfare did. Super duper good. And uh, pff, what else? Like, pretty much everything Nintendo. Yeah. I know uh, the new Breath of the Wild, not the second one, but the prequel came out today. I'm really excited for that. Oh, what? 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 Wait, what? Did you not know? No. Oh. What? what? Say what? <laughs> what? Okay, all right. So, Breath He's of the so Wild. He's so excited to tell us. Yeah, so heard. excited to tell us. Okay, okay. Breath of the Wild uh, came out 2017. And, uh, and like, the trailer for the second one, which they're making it more of, like, a horror, like, really dark and scary, like they did with Majora's Mask. That trailer came out a while ago. People are really excited for that. Nintendo's like, all right, listen, the second game isn't ready yet. We want to make sure it's really, really fun. So here's a prequel to the first game, how the war started 100 years ago. So it's a Hyrule Warriors game, but they call it Breath of the Wild Hyrule Warriors. And it's a lot of people didn't like that style of gaming, the Hyrule Warriors franchise, because it's like, it's, it's no story. You're just slashing a thousand enemies at once. Like it just gets redundant. But this time they 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 made it story based, and it's got some of the same mechanics. But mm. yeah, mm. more that, lore. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna have to check that out. Did you enjoy Hyrule Warriors? The first couple, I was like, this is okay. You know, it, it's not your traditional Zelda game. Right. Um, but I was like, I can get behind this. I I like the combat. I I like how just like relentlessly action packed it is. Yeah. But now it's even better. So I'm really excited. That's, That's do, wait, now I'm going back to, well, Al, Alex, I don't know if you know, is a huge fan of Zelda. So wow. she's going to be super stoked for that. Oh, yeah. Um, Alexandra is our social media producer for the show. Um, you said, no, I, I never got to the question. You don't play Minecraft, you said. Yes, I do. I do. Oh, you do play no, Minecraft. No, the, the Minecraft YouTuber thing was ironic. Oh, oh I was ta- okay. I was okay. talking about the, the people that are like, Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Minecraft channel. Oh, okay. Go to redbubble.com and buy our shirts, you know. Okay, okay. But now I'm like taking that back. I do play Minecraft. I, I follow a guy on TikTok who is okay. building the crevice. It's this big canal that he's trying to get two oceans to meet together. And there's already cringing. Go on. Uh, it's <laughs> so, dude. He's so into it that I'm into it, and I don't know. I don't even play the game or know what he's talking about. I'm just like, yeah, okay. And he's just harvesting. And is it Luke the Notable? He's an old dude. I don't oh, know. Maybe okay. we'll find it in in the break. But okay, he's very engaging. Uh, and I just don't know. So is there? It's an open world game. Is there adventures? Is there quests? I don't know. In what, Minecraft? Yeah. Oh, you're just starting Minecraft. I've not played it. I'm just watching people play wow, it. I don't that's know. That's really interesting. You, you know wow. About I saw like Corey Kenshin play it a couple of times, and I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Play like an hour of Minecraft. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm I nervous. think <laughs> it. I think it's a timeless game, dude. Okay. It's fun. It's. What is it? What is it? Please. Okay. Just all right. Explain. So you. <laughs> it all started with a descending xylophone and a wavy effect. So. Can we do that? In editing? <laughs> So, um, the story of Minecraft is you are a a man named Steve, and you are sent into a randomly generated world. So, like, every file you start, you might end up on a beach, you might end up in a forest, the mountains, you know, a cave, whatever. And your goal is to survive. So, you, you, like, harvest wood to make these tools, you use those to build houses, you use those tools to... Harvest more powerful tools made out of stone and then iron and then diamond. And uh, the main point is to travel to a different dimension and defeat a very powerful dragon. That is your main goal, but it's probably going to take you about three years. What? (laughs) Wait, I'm sorry, what? In real time. In real time, three years. Probably, depending on how much you play it. It's a very long game. There's so much to do. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to do in that game. Okay, you just blew my mind. I love this already. Yeah. So, what's the best weapon you can get in the game? 
anything made out of diamonds, and they're very, very hard to find. Diamonds are hard to find. You have to like mine down and like deep, deep into the earth. You can't just dig straight down and find them. I mean, if you are very lucky, you probably could. But like, I think the best thing to, there's like there's some sort of guide I remember that's like thirteen or fourteen blocks deep or something like that. It's like a specific number. I found them by going into an abandoned mine shaft filled with monsters and demons and the like. Um, and I had a fight for my life, and I escaped with four diamonds. And I was never happier in my life. So, Marriage, secondary. Wow. So these four diamonds, were you able to construct something from them? Yes, I made a diamond sword. Three and a stick gets you a diamond sword. Wow. And this and causes lots happy. of damage. Yes. Instant and you kill? Can enchant that. Oh, you can enchant it? Yes. But but to build an enchantment table, you need four diamonds. Oh, wow. Okay, so you need four more <laughs> diamonds for the enchantment table. Yeah. And then... Th- I got exactly four diamonds. I should have done that. Why yeah. didn't I do that? Yeah, that's actually a good point. Oh. This is... Should we take a break? I don't know. <laughs> he starts crying. Like, what if he... Dude, could you imagine he starts crying? Like, for real? I would be like... Oh, he's emotionally <laughs> unstable. Okay. Okay. I look at di- directly. Guys, I'm so sorry. I make an apology <laughs> video. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Can, let's say Peyton's playing this, uh-huh. or you, can yeah. I go, hey, you guys got some wood? Wood? <laughs> Why'd you say it like a hoity-toity person? You got some wood? Wood. Wood, you got some wood for me? Yeah. Can, I, can you give me wood? Yeah, we can play together. So do you jump into my world or I jump into yours? Yeah, I jump into your world and I and I look towards you and I say, "Babe, I think hey. we're in Minecraft." No, That's don't a call reference me babe. to a very <laughs> no, very no. very old YouTube video that is no longer available. Really? Yeah. Okay. So here's uh, okay. another story time. No, tell me more references that nobody's <laughs> gonna get because people love. That. Okay. No, probably no. <laughs> probably people who watch like Oni plays know what this is. Um, okay. Basically. Uh, that video was like one of the very first Minecraft parody videos. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about? What the fuck are we talking about here? Dude. Minecraft parody. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Guys, let's dive Go in ahead, deeper. Man. Let's let, you know what? Sure. Let's do it, man. <laughs> this is the content. This is the content, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking my phone out of my pocket because yeah, uh, it's like interfering with my mojo. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> I'm trying to lift my leg up and I can't. Uh, oh, this shit. Uh, this Minecraft video oh. <laughs> is like 13 years old, and it was this really buff dude that was like yeah. basically like uh. it's so weird. He's in like the body of a Chad. But he's got the mind of a Melvin. Oh. And, like, he, he, ma- he forced his girlfriend to make this parody with him. Yeah. And he's got, like, this crappy green screen of Minecraft behind him. And he's like, babe. He looks over to her and he's like, yeah. I think we're in Minecraft. <laughs> you can't. It's gone. What? It's gone. Surely somebody's re-uploaded. I don't know. My, one of my really good friends downloaded it, like, when it came out. Mm-hmm. So he has it, but it's gone. No one can find it anymore. Wow. Oh. It's it's a gem. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> There's one part where he gets like a really like shitty CGI pig just to walk in, like waddles in. Yeah. And like he's not even really looking directly at it. He's trying to like cheat the camera. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's start it's 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 walking in yeah. place. Like he's he's like trying to make it look like it's walking toward it's so good, dude. Such a gem. I love the obscurities and the internet yeah. and the little hole in the walls, hole in the grounds of these like random YouTubers, random bloggers, random websites that you can just yeah. come across. That to me is as close as to getting into like jumping into another world. Yeah. It it really is. And it's my fascination. It's an interesting world. Um, it is. It's a perspective <laughs> too. Like it's, I love subcultures and learning about them because it's always such a unique and such a a perspective on the world that you'll never get in your day-to-day life. And you can get enjoyment out of it. You can get angry from it. You can get surprised. You can get grossed out by some of the stuff. Yeah. 
Rewind. Yeah. You enjoy learning the internet subcultures? Yeah. Okay. Why? Is that weird? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wait. What? Wait. Like, what? I've never, Did I say something so... I've never heard anyone just like, the internet subcultures. Yeah. It really is, actually, if you think about it. I'll give you, I'll give you one. There's the Sonic fan base. Oh, I bet. I bet there's a, there's a fan base for everything. What is it? Rule 34? Is that what it's called? There's, there's, you know what that rule is? I didn't bring that up. You brought that up. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. There's, okay. That's, I'm just proving the point that, okay, we, yeah, we can say on this. Rule 34, for those don't of you Don't look up Gumball Rule 34. Don't do oh, it. No. You said it! <laughs> <laughs> you said Reverse psychology. Reverse psychology. Reverse, reverse psychology. Look it up. Yeah, and people anyway. won't do it. <laughs> you winked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to save your career. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. No. Um, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Oh, we uh, were talking. Yeah, about you, look up Rule 34. Just look it up. You'll, you'll have a good time. Um, yeah. Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> Rule 34, uh, no, uh, the internet subcultures, one of them, one of the YouTube rabbit holes I went down is mm -hmm. Hollow Earth. Have you heard of this? No. Oh my gosh. It's insane. They actually started taking videos down of Hollow Earth. What's Hollow Earth? So it's the theory that Earth is hollow and oh there's actually God. a civilization oh. in <laughs> Hollow Earth. They just watched and one episode of Milo Murphy's Law and they were like, yep, that's what happened. Well, they say the only way to get into Hollow Earth is through the North and South Poles, and they they say what? you can. They say we know it's real because if you try to go to Google Maps or you try to fly over the North Pole, nobody lets you, and they block out that area. Because it's a one of the most powerful electromagnetic pulses on the Earth that'll rip apart the plane, and you'll die. Is that no? I don't think that's it. I just don't think there's no reason to go over the North Pole. It's because of Santa, dude. Yeah. They don't want us finding about Santa. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing. And then the South Pole is with the South Pole elves. And that's where Satan Santa lives. Whoa. Satan. Krampus. Krampus lives on the South Pole? Yeah. This is such a holiday episode. I love it. Um, <laughs> Today, chi kids, we're going to learn about Satan Santa. Krampus. We did run the gambit. Minecraft. Rule 34. Krampus. I mean, what else can we hit? Satan Santa. Satan Santa. We Sam. Well, that's Krampus, right? No. Yeah, but. 34 Satan Santa. Oh, playing Minecraft. <laughs> Minecraft with the Sonic fan base. Oh, good. See, this is like a really good formula for just a great time. That's when you can just sit back, relax, and enjoy. You know what this your episode regularly is? Regularly scheduled program. This is the we're comfortable with each other episode. Yeah, I feel like we've already broken the ice. You know, we've already done the boiling milk bit. Now we're just. You know, I remember that. Yeah, you remember that. I remember that specifically. <laughs> specifically, that's the one thing you remember. I remember everything else is gone. Well, I thought our show. I thought we did the show two weeks ago, <laughs> and obviously I was. It feels so wrong. like it. It, it feels like it. It does, and uh, it wasn't. It was over a month ago, which I'm still surprised at. Honestly, are you yeah. doing anything for Thanksgiving? Yeah, I'm gonna get really, really fat. Yeah. Like, what's your, oh, dude, what's your go-to food for Thanksgiving? Okay, um, I used to hate stuffing when I was a kid, but now I really, really love it. So good. Oof. Really love stuffing, yeah. especially German-style stuffing. What's that? And Italian-style stuffing mixed in together. It's, yeah. like, it's like the stuffing is like, you ever had meatloaf, right? Stuffing is like compacted like meatloaf, so it's not loose. It's very bready, like oh, a lot of bread. I know what stuffing is, but what's German? So, like, that's how it's done. It's, like, done like a loaf. Oh. And it's so good. Oh, and I Italian see what you're saying. zest sprinkled all over that. Oh. That yeah. actually sounds pretty good. I was, good. I'm not a fan of stuffing. You know what I want for what? Thanksgiving? I have a thing for okay. Thanksgiving. And I say this every year, and I stick to it every year. Mm -hmm. And if somebody argues with me about it, and then I go, it's okay, then I won't do your Thanksgiving. Okay, this is my rule, and I'm not gonna look at you when I do this. I'm looking into camera. All right, right? I'm gonna look into camera too. Yeah, we're gonna be side by side or something. I don't know if we can do that. Probably could. I don't do anything on Thanksgiving. I don't help cook. I don't help clean. I'll put my plate away. That's about it. This is what I want to do on Thanksgiving. I just want to play video games, day drink. Even though I don't drink that much, it sounds like I drink every day single drink. episode. I just I want to sip on apple cider the whole day. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I want to yeah. do. 
I, I want to play video games. I want to watch movies. I want to be lazy. I want to, I, I, I don't want to do anything. You know what I, you, ne- well, before COVID, put on the Macy's Day Parade in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Laugh at all the people who waited outside. Watch Super Saiyan Blue Goku float over. That would be amazing. <laughs> they do. They do Wait, it. they did that last yeah, year? Yeah, they did it two times in a row. Really? Miss yeah. that. Probably from all the day drinking I did. <laughs> but I like to get a workout in early in the morning. I like to go so oh, okay. hard that I'm starving I all day long. That. Oh, dude. Dude. I want to, I, I, you have to pretend like you're fighting ISIS in the morning during your workout. <laughs> That's what you have to do, Jacob Hopkins. You have to be okay. kicking the pads like you're kicking yeah. the terrorist leader of ISIS. And he's got your family hostage. And you have to kick him so hard that he has to give the coordinates of where your family is. And if you don't kick him yeah. hard enough, he won't give you those coordinates. Can I come film this? Sure. We put a bit in just right here. Yeah, I want you, I want I you, to, be, I want you to be kicking a heavy bag with al-Baghdadi's face just plastered onto it. Oh, my gosh. Thanksgiving's this Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's it's like in Jacob four Hopkins days. Let me be your coach. Okay. Because I, I literally pulled a hammy last week. I don't know if you knew this. I I, I was sprinting. Oh dude, two days ago I, I pulled a ligament like below my knee. Oh, really? I'm, st- I'm still in pain. Really? Like a, as we speak. It's getting mine's a lot got, better. My, my mine's gotten better as well. Okay. But I was running sprints with my buddy uh Michael and uh not the Michael we were talking about, uh but Michael um Michael Kelly. <laughs> And uh, Jonte Lagrosse, we were running sprints. Uh, I beat them, but mm-hmm. in the last sprint, and I have to say I beat them because, <laughs> dude, they're not going to beat me. It would have sucked if you lost and pulled. Oh yeah, dude, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I, I was so angry at myself. So I was running, and I felt, and I, and I, and I heard the pop. I, I that first day. I don't know how you felt with yours on the first day. I was like, oh, cool. I'll probably need surgery. I could not walk because what I was doing was I was, um, you know, the bobs, like those, um, those targets that are shaped like the torso and head of a guy. They're called bobs. Yeah. And it stands for something. Yeah. But I have one of those and that's what I oh, use for that's Taekwondo. Great. Um, cause I was like, listen, I have a heavy bag and that's great for punching, but I need to practice learning how to kick people. Yeah. And it's true because I do tournaments. And I need to, like, actually get used to hitting someone in the head. And also in real life. But backpedal. Kicking the bob. Kicking the bob. It's with my left leg. Ooh, that's actually a lot better than yesterday. Um, You're welcome. I pew, kick it. And I don't know what I did. It was, like, it's been, it was, like, a few days since I've done Taekwondo. So maybe I was a little bit out of it. Maybe I didn't stretch enough. And I, and I felt like the... Like it's like taking like a a string and just tightening it and it just you know, and that's what it felt like. Just like something tightened and it spasmed. I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's supposed to happen. I no. think that I think that's the opposite of what's supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that sucked. Have you? All right. So it's getting better. Oh yeah. So let's do this. Let's we'll we'll talk about it okay. <clears throat> afterwards. We'll plan something. Well, maybe we'll put a. Uh, Al Baghdadi's face or somebody, one of the terrorist leaders okay. on the Bob. Okay. Yeah. And I can coach you. Like I'll be your coach. Yeah. You know, cause I'm a good coach and okay. you're probably a better, you're, I'm sure you're a better kicker than me right now. Cause I haven't kicked in years. So yeah. Well, I mean, it's just how much you keep up with it. I mean, true. You know what? I don't, I don't want to underestimate you. I don't want to be like, yeah, dude, totally. I don't, no, I mean I, I don't know. know what you're capable of. Well, I, 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 you're consistently practicing, so I know you're miles beyond me right now. So, I will say this: my push kick's probably still good. Yeah, because that never goes away. <laughs> yeah, that flexibility is there, but like a back turning kick, mm, probably won't throw one of those. And that's the most, what you mean, like back turning, like you turn around and just so into the chest, here? or like you swipe on their face. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Back, yeah. What do you call it? Uh, in my dojo, we call it back spin kick. Back spin kick is so yeah. interesting. I, we talked about this last yeah, time, yeah, right? Like we have <clears throat> different name, like different dojos call them different things, but they're the same concept. Yeah. yeah. That I can't do with my left leg, but I can do with my right. Oh, we're the opposite then. Okay. So you're a lefty. Well, maybe in some kicks, or no? No, Wait. I'm right leg dominant, but in but turning can... kicks, I'm more dominant with my left. And I think it's because my stabilizing leg is my right leg. Oh, that makes sense. And yeah, it's more flexible. 
because the dominant side, you know, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. That's probably how I am too. It, yeah, actually, now that I think about it, I've always said like it depends on the kick which I'm more dominant in. Yeah. But now that I think about it, it is the uh, spinning kicks that I'm more dominant in my right leg. I'm a lefty mm. when I'm normally doing it. You know what? I'm going to start doing this from now on. Uh, dude, <laughs> my dad is FaceTiming me right now, and he just told me the freaking hilarious story. Hold on. I'm sorry we have to do this. We no, get him on. Are you kidding me? He hung up right in the moment. Oh, dude. <laughs> I would have loved it if he's just an older version of you. Sam Keish, you're on the show. You're live. Oh, my goodness. How are you? Good. You've, we've got a famous actor here, Dad. His name is Jacob Hopkins. What's up, Mr. Hello, Wee Sam? Hi. Nice I'm doing you. great. Can you, do me a big, can you do me a big favor, Dad? Yeah, sure. Can you tell me the awesome story you told me this morning? <laughs> About the cameras? Yes. I <laughs> Leave think... me alone, man. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I love you, Dad. Everything good? I love you too. Yes, I'm sorry. I forgot to have a podcast. No, it's okay. I'll talk to you later. I'll you talk sure? to you later. All right. Yes, yes. Bye, Bye Papa Kish. Bye. Leave me alone, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, I'm sorry. To, I have to say this story before I forget it. Okay. We'll All get right. back to the kicking and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so my dad's trying to install a security system. Told him about Ring. He called, he was so excited about this story. He called and he told me how he went on called customer service uh, apparently multiple times and okay. they hung up on him a couple of times. Uh, wow. I don't know what happened there. That's unexpected. That's usually customer service is very good and cooperative. Right. He was asking questions that they didn't have answers to. And mm. so they eventually routed him to the manufacturer and he talked with somebody there who was like, super into his because he's an engineer yeah your dad yeah he's an oh, aircraft okay. engineer and so he had a very technical question to ask and the guy was like that's a great question and then they found the boxes see how boring the story is when he's telling it to me it was so boring and i just kept going like this like <laughs> okay okay and he wait, said wait then why'd you <laughs> no because i want to put everybody through what i was put through <laughs> this morning <laughs> you were like initially this is a great story and then, like, halfway through, you're like, see, this is a really boring, sucky story. I know. <laughs> and this is why. This is why it's so great. It was so boring. And so, but he was so excited to tell me because this was his the, – the, the highlight of, of his day. Oh, the climax of the story was this. <laughs> and he goes, we, Sam, there are two serial numbers. And one has a plug-in and the other doesn't. One is 6215 and the other one is 6213. One number difference. Can you believe that? And dude, I was dying. No! <gasps> what? I know. That's exa dude. I was laughing so hard, and I'm like, "Wow, Dad, that is so awesome!" And he's like, "Shut up, we said. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have moment." Yeah, he's just like, anyway. Dude, so that is guys really good. It. That's a really good story. My dad's awesome. I love him. And I actually, <laughs> actually, really want to like hear it the way he told it. Oh, dude. Because that actually does sound hype. Just fake it till you make it, man. Well, about my, anything. My, you've, met, you've met my dad. Yeah. He's an intense gentleman. Oh, yeah. He, remember yeah, he when he, enough. oh, yeah. He's talking about serial numbers and. Oh, when he was talking about the serial number, it sounded like the most intense thing in the world, but it was so yeah. boring to listen to. Uh, <laughs> but uh, remember when he grabbed my friend Isaiah and he's like, <laughs> put your eye in my eye. <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> what was he talking to him about? I don't even... It, it was nothing, like, that important. No. Like, it was just... It was just, like, thank you for being such a good friend with Wee Sam or something. Like, it was nothing, like, urgent. It was just... <laughs> Put your eye in my eye. Oh, my God. Anyway, that's my dad. He just, like, grabs him by the shirt. He's like, you listen. Spiritually, he grabbed him. Like, he grabbed his soul with his soul. <laughs> And Isaiah, of course, Isaiah's like, <laughs> okay, he's just laughing. It's yeah. so uncomfortable. <laughs> um, no, we should do, back to the kicking thing, we okay. should definitely do something where we're kicking a bob. Oh, okay, yeah. And I'm coaching you, and we're kicking the terrorist leader and getting people pumped up. Maybe a really workout good. video. Oh, my God, that actually would be... A cheesy 90s, like, workout video. Yeah. And then the backtrack is like, you're the best around. Mm-hmm. Nothing's gonna ever bring you down. Yeah. Now, now the Goldbergs, uh -huh. that takes place in the 80s, right? Yes. Yes. 
the the spinoff, which was canceled, was in the 90s, which was... School. School. That's yes. right. But you weren't in that. Mm -mm. No, no. You were just in the Goldbergs. Just you, the Goldbergs. That's right. Okay. I was always wondering how they would ever bring Chad Kremp into that scenario, though. Yeah. And I just I didn't see them bringing anyone else but the school staff. Yeah. Because it's all focused on that. I was like, what would be the... You know, I don't know why it got canceled. I, I mean, because I didn't have anything to do with it, so of course I don't know. Yeah. But... When I watched it, I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. I thought it was really funny. You know, you never know why things get canceled. I, I, I'm sure it was funny. I, haven't, I honestly haven't watched it. I saw clips from it. But I, um, yeah, we'll talk afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk afterwards. Yeah. Um, it always amazes me what shows networks choose to put on and choose not to keep yeah, on. Yeah, like they chose Mr. Pickles to be put on Adult Swim. And if you haven't watched that, it's the best show ever. Mr. Pickles? No. Oh. What is this? What is this? Mr. Pickles is an Adult Swim cartoon that got freaking canceled. Oh. And uh, it was basically um, a dog that is Satan incarnate. Like, literally Satan. Like, if, you, if he goes into his doghouse, he's got, like, a secret latch that leads to, like, demons and, like, 666 and everything. Yeah. And um, it's really awful because you're just going to have to watch it. I can't even talk about it. Like, every episode wow. is just filled right. with the grossest, like, I can't, okay. I can't, I can't get into it. I can't, because okay. I'll be ruined. Wow, you seem really passionate about not <laughs> I'm so, liking this show. I'm so mad that yeah. it ever... You got made? Yeah. It's okay, man. It horrified You don't have to me. watch it. It's canceled. It's canceled. It's fine. It's hey, calm down. It's Hopkins. Okay. It's fine. It's okay. I might call you Hopkins from now on. Hopkins. Maybe. We Sam, your last name is Sam, right? We Sam Sam? I can't tell if this is a bit. <laughs> it's Kish. Kish. Yeah. All right. Kish. Kish. Calm down. Are you it's Italian? Canceled. It's all over. <laughs> you know what I'm really psyched for this uh, Thanksgiving break is the Family Guy Godfather episode. What? I'm going to sit down with my celery stick and Sunny D and Ooh. I'm going to call all my friends over. Be like, guys. Family Guy, yeah. You don't like Family Guy. I can't <laughs> tell. Ironically, I like it. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. I can't tell. You're just, <laughs> <laughs> just like, people are like, what? what are they doing now? <laughs> well, it's still, what is it, 14 seasons? <laughs> <laughs> hey, how many seasons is Family Guy on? You just pull like a random guy up the street. Sir! It's, it's one of those shows like The Simpsons. I think it'll just be on forever it's one of the shows where i'm really tired i just sit there and i'm watching it and i'm like while the show's going on if you cut to me i'm just like yeah just staring at the screen it's amazing though it was canceled i don't know how twice i believe and they brought <laughs> it back because of the fans the I fans were like that. made such a uproar about it it's just like it's it's one of those shows it's like it's gone on for way too long and it's just run out of things yeah you know me and my buddy we have a script that we wrote a pilot script that's now mm. out and about to production companies, so hopefully we'll get some good news in the coming weeks. And getting and learning about the whole pilot selling, script selling, and then also how TV shows, kind of like the producing side of everything, is so interesting to me. It's a whole different world. It's it is. It's like it, it's throwing your pretty much throwing in your baby, your thing that you've spent so much time on right. and like a lifetime on. It seems like, and then it's like okay. Throw it in the survival pit. And you you got to pitch it and give it your all and really convince these people to put it on air. It's it's very... Like, people don't understand, like, the intensity that goes along with that type of stuff. It's so much work. It's a lot it's of work. stress and then also getting network approval on stuff. Yeah. Constantly when you're in the middle of a show. Uh, production approval and making sure the names are cleared with... with uh, the lawyers, because you can't use names that resemble uh, real people too closely. Otherwise, that's, yeah. a, that's a whole thing. Not that's that's just a small part of it. Um, yeah, and working with everybody, the collaboration effort of everything. And yeah, then, I was about to say, like, not to mention working with people that actually agree with you. Like, be a godsend. I don't know how some people do it. <laughs> like, yeah. There's so many different opinions. I hear, I've, I've heard some horror stories of, <laughs> n like... <laughs> higher ups and screenwriters trying to get their stuff made. Yeah. And for Nightcrawler, I believe it's Nightcrawler, the script. Whoa. Wait. 
That didn't come out yet, did it? It did. What? Wait, Nightcrawler TV show? No, no, a oh. movie oh. with Jake Gyllenhaal. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, hold on a second. What? I was wait, Nightcrawler X Men or? No, Nightcrawler. Nothing okay. to do. With. It's like, Jake Gyllenhaal yeah. in a movie called uh, yeah, Nightcrawler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Well, th- I believe it was that script where they were like, "Hey, we love the script. It's just too long. You're gonna have to cut it like ten pages short." Or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he was like, everything's in it is what I want in it. Like, there's nothing to cut. So he was like, okay. He literally took the margins down a little bit and the size of all the lettering. And then he resubmitted it. And they're like, oh, it's great. Thank you. <laughs> so, like, that's a, that's, a, that's a big brain move. They just sometimes don't even read it. That just goes to show. Uh, yeah, because I think if you were... I mean, I might be wrong, and who knows? This is just a story I read on the internet, so it could be f- false, but... We, Sam, let's be honest, like, when has the internet ever lied? About votes? We what? should, like... What? We should, like, have, like, a, a stream of, like, everything the internet lied. Like, like wh- votes? What? Okay, so, like, right. here's, here's an editing challenge. Epic editing challenge of 2020. Okay. When, so, like, when I say that, yeah. everything should freeze. Okay. And, like, we should cut to, like, a wide shot. Mm-hmm. And then, like, in this space, just yeah. everything the internet ever lied about ever. That would be a video that would go on for infinity. <laughs> so that would be a big upload-sized video for YouTube. <laughs> Maybe break it up into parts. <laughs> Part one, internet Part lies. One. Part First one, one Hollow Earth. we play Minecraft. Part two. <laughs> what? You ever seen those YouTube videos where it's, like, those Hollow Earthers and Flat Earthers... Like, do uh, experiments to prove that the Earth is flat, and then they end up proving to themselves that the Earth is round. I saw one video like that. Yes. Yeah. They were basically, like, they were at night, and it's like, if we look out into the horizon. Yes! Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I saw. That's yes, the yes. One. So, basically, this dude, accompanied by a camera crew, like, it was so professional. Mm-hmm. He got, he's got, like, this special, like, like, telescope binocular thing, basically just, like, a magnifying tool. And it's got like this big board in front of it. Like it's some tool I've never seen before, but it basically magnifies specifically looking at the horizon. And the guy's like, if we look at the horizon, we can see that it's flat, which proves that the earth is flat. And he looks at it. and It's like the most round thing you've ever seen in your life. And he's like, I just got to adjust it. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I, I think just to clarify, yeah. it might be a, it might be a different video I'm watching. The video okay. I saw was they have, sticks holding up these like white signs with holes in the Mm -hmm. middle and they have a light in in there and they have an identical one i don't know like maybe a mile away Mm -hmm. and they're like if the earth was round we wouldn't be able to see that and they were put on the same plane and everything um but since the earth is flat we'll be able to see right into the right we can see the light a mile away through that little hole yeah and then they checked the light wasn't there. And I remember him going, huh, that's interesting. And then the, um, what's it called? That, uh, I've seen that too. Curb your enthusiasm. Yes. It was a comes comp- on. Yeah. Dude, that's what it was. I have seen that as well. It was a curb your, uh, flat earthers. Yes, compilation. yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. It was God. a compilation, dude. You know, I wanted, I talked, I talked about this last year. I wanted to have a real flat earther and then a real scientist on the show and just kind of mm. moderate the debate and trying to explain to like, that would probably be your shortest podcast yet. <laughs> it would. So, what do you got? <laughs> Flat Earth there? Nothing? All right. All right. Cool. Okay, cool. I'm just digging. He's just, he has this science. But it's amazing to me. What do you think makes people so dug into their point of views with stuff like that? Um, it's, it's definitely, I think, a, a sense of belonging to something. Like, come on, man. Really? The Earth is flat? Hmm. Because it's people like it's the same it's the same thing, dude. With all those cults, all those like, you know, conspiracy uh, groups, it's a sense of belonging. It's a sense of deluding yourself that like there's some sort of sense of mystery or some something like I don't know. It, it's I really do feel like it's like a sense of belonging to something important, making yourself feeling powerful. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I think it is so such a powerful feeling and it's, it's in our totally DNA totally power hungry dude to be in the same 
tribe, the same community yeah. that agrees with you. Maybe you were made fun of. Maybe you were in, you never felt that before. So as soon as you feel that for the first time, you're like, oh, I don't want to let this go. So I'm going to do everything I can yeah. to ignore the facts and kind of be in this echo chamber of people who agree with me and we never really yeah like maybe you were just like playing baby game Fortnite and watching epic meal time and some guy smacked you on the head like loser and then you became a flat earther like who i mean that's just i'm just throwing that out. i'm just spitballing who knows i mean i mean that's just is it tough being an alcoholic at such an early age is it really gratifying to just sit there at Thanksgiving and just ignore your family and don't help them with anything? Yes! 100%! Are you kidding me? Hey, man, I didn't ask you to... No, 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 no! Yeah, Jacob! Yeah, yeah. Why don't you just do Jacob, everything. Jacob, Jacob! Oh, look at this guy! Hey, hey, we Sam, if you, don't, if you don't do this Thanksgiving stuff, then maybe you shouldn't participate. Oh, that's fine. I won't participate then. I think I just ruined your chair. One second. Oh, probably. There we go. <laughs> this guy... Hey, I didn't ask for Thanksgiving, okay? I don't want to... Dude, wanna all the pilgrim ancestors, Native American ancestors, they're just shaking hands. We love each other. We found peace. They're looking this, down this on you. They're like, what are you happened. doing? This guy thinks that happened. This guy thinks that happened. Can you once believe a, that? Once upon a merry, merry time, Mayflower. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Don't know what that was. Losing his mind. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? That was Mayflower floating in the shit. Yeah? Hands. Oh, you crazy person. Oh, cool. <laughs> Good to meet you, man. Hey! Go to a doctor! <laughs> Dude, what do I remember about AP US history? Um, huh? Did, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I'm, I'm at a point where I'm trying to find meaning in my okay. life. Yeah. I'm trying to look back at all the minuscule things that happened. <laughs> young Matt Damon. Classic. <laughs> Cl this is classic young Matt Damon right here. Listen, I've got some things to plug. Um, yeah? What do you yeah. want to plug? Uh, <laughs> I was going to go on a bit, but you got me off guard. <laughs> like, yeah? What do you want to plug? No, no, go ahead, man. Um, what do you got? What do you I actually got? do have something I do. I actually do. Okay. I actually do. Um, so, <laughs> such, a, <laughs> such a horrible way. Hey, I got something to plug. Yeah, go so, ahead, man. Go, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Just, okay. Let's try and bring it up organically. Okay. Um, so, I have on. something to plug. Uh, man, uh, th those look like brand new horrible shoes. It looks like you had some money come in. Yeah, and I actually worked did. Project? In, in fact, no. I'm, what about you? I, no, you're plugging your bit. That's what? <laughs> <laughs> did you? <laughs> some freaking checkered vans, man. I'm s <laughs> Speaking oh. of checkered, did you two plan this? No, we really oh. didn't. <laughs> I really would, like the black beanie too. This is the first day I wore this black beanie. I was like, oh, I'll take that one. <laughs> I think last time I was here, Peyton was wearing the same beanie. I always wear this fucking black yeah. beanie because I need a haircut so bad. <laughs> Honestly, I wear the same four things constantly. Yeah, I think 90% of the episodes of this show are me with a white v-neck. Yeah. This is actually forced. My usual attire is just like graphic t-shirts. Forced? Yeah, like, I just put this on because I was trying to look like an actual human being. But if you found me in my natural habitat, I'd just be wearing a shirt with Frieza on it or something. Do that next time. Be you. <laughs> Don't dress up for this show. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, man. Um, Wait, are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you like this outfit? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's whatever. No, no, it's fine. It looks fine. Huh. Gumball. <laughs> Why do I call it Gumball? <laughs> hey, any other projects you're working on? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So actually, yes. Um, I just, well, not recently. Um, it's like a month ago. I, uh, it's a lot of work in the mix. Um, collaborated with BBC. Um, they got a new series out, um, which basically they get different celebrities to come on and teach kids in quarantine, whether it's about math, science, English, or maybe in the arts. And I chose the arts, and I chose to do voice acting. The show's called Celebrity Supply Teacher, and basically teaching everyone how to voice act, how to warm up your voice, how to break down and analyze a character. Um, it's really, really fun. It should be coming out, I want to say, like, December this year, like next month. Um, wow. Yeah. That's actually really nice of you to do. Yeah. Did you get positive feedback from the kids? N it hasn't come out yet. It's going to be coming out uh, December. 
Sorry, you didn't work with the kids yet. Not yet. Oh, you're going to do this. It's basically like life in quarantine where I film myself, like teaching kids everything. And oh, then, yeah. okay, okay, okay. And okay, then, gotcha. then That's they, cool. Yeah, and then they watch it. Um, and it's almost like they're watching like a YouTube video. So like we're following like an internet type of format, making yeah. it look like, you know, the aesthetic and everything. Um, and yeah, it should be coming out December and you can always, um, check my Instagram and Twitter. Instagram is Hopkins Jake. Twitter is Hopkins Jacob five. And I will update you on all that to come. Two things. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. Thank you very it's much. really great. Second, how annoying is that that you don't have your full name on Instagram or Twitter? <laughs> well, Hopkins J ja it's just my name, but revert. Oh, Jake. Short for Jacob. Oh, you mean like you would rather me do Jacob Hopkins verified? Yeah, man. That's what I'm saying. Wait, you're saying you said how annoying is it to not have my full name on Twitter? What you know what's more at? annoying? This <laughs> What are you getting at? No, Jacob Hopkins. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. And you made it look like that was the stupidest question on the planet. You're like, yeah, man, that. Yeah. And just kind of shrunk back. I'm like, hey, man, listen. Just no, we're, 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 we're talking. We're How sisters. Annoying. I created uh, that to be um, <laughs> basically like there, when I started out, I'm going to be frank. There's a lot of people posing as me. And I got to the point where it was like. Me and my family. I'm like, you're not. That's not your family. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. wait a minute. People who are using no, but that's what I mean. Like, like uh, but your they first would and use, last name. They would use Jacob Hopkins. Oh, they they somebody already they has would, that. Yeah, they like people already had that. That's what I mean. Is that annoying to you that somebody not has anymore. Jacob? Not anymore. Okay. Not anymore. It doesn't happen really anymore. There might be like one out there, but it was a pretty big deal when I first started because like the first big thing I did was True Blood when I was like nine. And that was a huge show back in the early 2000s. It was like the hot, you know, vampire show on HBO. And Who'd you play in that? Alexander Drew. I was a vampire in the uh, Vampire Authority, the council of like all the most powerful vampires. And they were in charge of like the vampire society. And they set all these rules to keep vampires incognito in the human uh, world. And yeah. You know, I used to watch that show with my uh, roommates. Really? Yeah, and so that's why I'm I'm I didn't for some reason I skipped over that on your IMDb when I was this was a while yeah. ago. Um, were you in a lot of episodes? I'm sorry, I, I don't remember. I was in three episodes. Okay, three consecutive episodes, and mm. by the third episodes, um, I had like fed. Like what happened was the entire Vampire Authority started to like get killed off because like the whole um like vampire government started to collapse, um because they were all breaking their own rules, so. I was the first to break the rules, which was feeding on a human and filming it. Whoa. And I got staked, and I, like, exploded in all these blood and guts. Whoa. That's yeah. pretty cool. I was yeah. super stoked as a kid, because, like, I loved, like, violence and monsters and stuff. Oh, yeah. So I was like, whoa. That's was awesome. Like, Are you okay? Like, this is pretty, <laughs> this is pretty gory. <laughs> like, no, nah, it's cool. That's great. That's yeah. also so cool for an actor to delve into those kind of things that you know the process was insane like the, the 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 staking scene was basically like i get lifted up by my shirt and like impaled with a stake and um and the process of that was like i was on a harness yeah it's like as a nine-year-old that's like one of the most fun things ever Whoa. and so like they lift me up on a harness is like and i'm flying yay and then the special effects was really cool. They took me backstage. They were probably thinking, like, I would get scared by the process. So they were just trying to walk me through, like, this isn't real. You know, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. <laughs> Stop crying, kid. <laughs> and they show me, like, the, the blood and guts. And, like, that's you later in the scene. And I was, I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah. That's cool. You had a positive experience with it. Yeah. I was going to say, the, in True Blood... The there was this character that I was like, oh, that is such a cool character. It was the head, super powerful vampire. He kind of looked like how you look now. He was a white dude. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? He was like super powerful, but he was, was like the oldest vampire. Was it Alexander Skarsgård? No. One of the, okay. No, it was um. Because he's tall and blonde. No, he was like kind of uh shorter. Okay. But he was, he I didn't watch young, the show. But he was old in the show. Okay, then. Yeah, because yeah. I only watched my episodes. Because again, I was like nine. Yeah. I mean, now, of course, I could watch it, but... Yeah. yeah. Man. 
We uh, well, Peyton. Congrats to Peyton, by the way. He uh, his true crime episode just aired recently. His first one. Yeah. What? Yeah. So big, big. It's his first first TV gig in LA. Woo! Yeah. That's awesome. No, it is. It's awesome. <laughs> awesome, man. And, and uh, <laughs> he was talking. He showed me a clip from it, and it was so disturbing because these are real life crimes that have been committed. Mm-hmm. And the clip he showed me. I was like, oh, this is actually kind of a disturbing story. I, like my, it wrenched my gut a little bit. And then Peyton Ooh. was saying, <laughs> he was giggling, like having a blast on set playing this. Like I was having so much Wait. fun filming it. <laughs> like, you know. You like, didn't explain it properly. <laughs> you, I thought you meant like you were watching the episode and you were like, whoa, this is wrenching my gut. Peyton's in the corner giggling. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, 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 sorry. I'm on set. <laughs> Him on set. Yeah, you know, he's okay. like excited, like, oh my God, this is my first gig. Oh, I'm having such a great time that is so playing cool, this man. real death and this horrible thing that happened to a bunch of people. You <laughs> yeah, know? It happened yeah. to real people, but like on set, I'm like, I'm having a blast. Like, yeah. reenacting this. Like, I get shot and like, I get murdered. And Jeez. then, like, I'm watching it. And I was like, oh shit, this happened to real people. <laughs> and like, they, they have like the only survivor, and she's like having a hard time talking about it. And I'm like, should I feel bad? Like, should I? Like, what? 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 Whoa, what happened there, man? I just want to make sure it was recording. Oh. Yeah, sorry. You, like, leaned over and was like... Uh, like yeah. Whole body. I know. It's bad. It's fine. It happens to me, too. I know. Um, no, I was... And I, I remember telling you, it's like, can you imagine that guy's ghost? Like, the guy you played is like, oh, I'm glad he's having a good time. Yeah. Reenacting my death. It is awesome. Man. I had a burp. He and got that's choked I mean. up Act- there. I know, I did. <laughs> Acting is so weird like that, where we get excited to play these mm-hmm. disturbing events in history or these disturbing events in a story. It's so, like... I watched Cape Fear for the first time a few oh. weeks ago with Robert De Niro. How was that? And I was like, wow. Like, how did he feel doing this? <laughs> mm. Have you seen Cape Fear? No. Um, Robert De Niro, um, this is like... This isn't like, uh, like a like a twist. This is explained like in the beginning of the movie. Robert De Niro is like recent. He plays a criminal who is recently released. Like it shows him in a cell, and then like they're like, "Okay, your time's up," and he goes out back into society. And of course, he just commits the crimes again. I mean, of course, but like he goes right back into it. But and that's just putting it bluntly. Like there's so much more to it yeah that there's like a whole story but like the things he does and that just goes for every actor who plays like a real like psychotic villain like how do they feel when they do that like anthony hopkins doing silence of the lambs and hannibal like it's so intense and like they they just have to put themselves in this mental state of just like wanting to do these things and like coveting and it's so crazy. Anthony Hopkins is so fun to watch. He as is. As an actor. And I think it's because he's having a lot of fun. Yeah. And him as a person is, he's so eccentric. I don't know if you know much about him. Oh, I've seen his Instagram. Oh, yeah. Oh, I fo- yeah. I oh, follow yeah. Him too. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's one of the best Instagram <laughs> accounts to he's follow. He's hilarious. Him and Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> I think my goal, my dream is to have John claude Van Damme on this show. Oh. He talks like no other person on this planet. Do an impression. No. Because <laughs> I want him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, there's a great YouTube video of somebody breaking down Anthony Hopkins' scene on Westworld. And what, yeah, I was just about to bring that up. I've seen it. The dynamic performance he gives in that short scene... It, there's so many colors to it. There's so many levels. There's so many emotions. And it's so specific with each beat. That guy he is has. really good at breaking stuff down, by the way. I you forget want, the YouTube oh. channel, but dude, that one part where, like, the woman. Season two, I just started. Oh, oh, we won't give anything away. Oh, 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 oh okay. Then I won't say anything. I'm actually really glad you caught me because I, I would. Man, I'm really disappointed in myself. I've never seen it. Oh, okay. But I know what it's about. There, the there's, just about. A, there's just a reaction he gives where he's asked like a very intense question, and he just kind of looks down, 
And he, like his lip like quivers and he laughs and chuckles and like looks back at the girl with like these really intense eyes. Like, I think that's acting at its finest. Yeah. yeah. Just no words, just acting. You know? It's it's listening, too. And I think that's what he does so well. You have he, to really listen. You have to really be in the conversation. And Anthony Hopkins actually said in an interview, like, the key to making things so real and being so conversational and in the moment is to make the lines, like, forth. Like, just, like, have them to the point where you can say them backwards. Yes. Because then you can record... Not record. You can say them... In any pattern you want, you can control the tempo of your speech. Like, it's true. That is... Because what a lot of actors do, and it's it's baffling that they do this, and I'm not talking about, like, working actors, because I'd be shocked if they're working, if this is their way of approaching things. They just, like... And I, I, I face this in the when I go into audition in the room. They just read the script, and they're like, yeah, okay, I got it. And then they go in the room and I can hear them like stumbling over everything. I'm like, got to know your lines. Because once you know what you're going to say, you don't have to worry about what you're going to say. People like focus so much on what they're saying that it just doesn't seem real. They're searching for the lines. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And you can tell. You can. Yeah. Um, I think... The, the response I get from a lot of beginning actors and non-actors is like, how do you memorize all that? How do you, how do you get so good at memorizing? And it's something that I was lucky enough to continue to do throughout my career. Every week, you have to memorize something. You have to memorize a large chunk every single week. Otherwise, it's like a muscle and it gets weaker and weaker with time yeah. if you don't do it. And that's something Anthony Hopkins does that I heard. He memorizes a sonnet a week just to keep himself. Yeah, that's tight. right. And I'm like, wow, that's incredible. And not only that, he he composes his own music. So his brain. Really? Oh, wow. yeah. He has a whole. I did not know that. Oh, my God. You should hear some of his music he's composed. And having an orchestra play it in front of him is so beautiful. Like You're like, well, this guy's brain, He it's so it's still so alive sharp, yeah. and sharp and 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 and. And it can do the, that technical thing of playing one beat with your right hand, the other one with your left hand, composing music, understanding rhythm, timing. And and that's what really makes like a legendary actor that will work for decades and will like be known throughout history, like the late Sean Connery or Anthony Hopkins or Patrick Stewart. Is they're so like they're they're classically trained, they're so intelligent, they're so they're just so classical. Yeah. I really feel that helps a lot, especially being creative. Yes. 100%. That's very important. Do you f- I, that's why I think martial arts is going to definitely help you in your career. Oh, and yeah. It's definitely helped. You have to expand yourself and just not do acting. You yep. have to do other forms of, you know, do other cross disciplines, you know, other mm-hmm. acting stuff, other arts, painting, music. I think it's so critical for it all is. actors to learn some kind of instrument, at least one. Um, because, it, yeah, you're totally right. It, 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 adds, it adds something deeper. Um, it, like I do martial arts, but I also play play drums. I remember we talked yeah. about this last time, and two different art forms right there: music, which is movement and rhythm, and that helps in acting. It's controlling the rhythm of a conversation. Yeah. And then the martial arts definitely brings a, a presence about you. Yeah. That's something you don't see in everyone. No. Yeah. Did you ever check out Yusuf Kamal? I did. I was actually about to bring that up. Yusuf Kamal. I watched um, a couple videos. And you're right, it's very jazzy, very relaxing, very smooth. I really like it. And I really, I'm not a real big jazz guy, but I do like the stuff he does. Yeah. I think it's really, really cool. And it's very technical. Yes. Yeah. I like technical drummers. Yeah. Because that's something I'm not good at <laughs> at all. I'm getting there. I'm practicing. I'm Because, pra- like, especially in classical music, it's very technical. There's just, like, it's not a pattern that repeats and that's easy to do for any musician who's experienced, of course, in like knowing how to play the instrument. But something technical that it's like, it's almost like a story. It doesn't repeat itself. These beats don't repeat itself. You move on to new things. That's difficult. And that's what I'm really worried. And that's what Yusuf Kamal does. And that's what I'm working on. Mm-hmm. I want to. I want to get there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start practicing piano again with because mm. I I had a teacher for a little bit. She taught me how to sight read. 
like read music for the first oh. time because I never knew how. And I'm like, I want a challenge. Yep. So I started doing that. And for a while there, I was some, making some headway, you know, mm -hmm. and that kind of stopped. And now I have to just do a few ref refresher courses. But I'd like to get back into it because it was forcing me to learn something that I just didn't know and I needed to practice and practice and practice. But something I found so familiar with practicing piano that I found with memorizing lines or working on an, um, an acting piece is the fact that after, you know, the first day of hours of working on it, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a sculpture uh, artist. And, you know, he has all the debris and everything after he's been sculpting and sculpting and sculpting. Yes. And I feel like it's all this mess. So I kind of take the day... And by the end of it, I, for, I'm, I, I don't even have the lines right. You know, I'm like messing up on some of the mm -hmm. keys or whatever. And so I'm like, all right, I need to give this a little bit of break and rest. And so the next morning, I'm nervous to even start it because I was like, oh, the last time I touched this yesterday, I wasn't doing great. And all of a sudden, it's like, clicks. whoa, how do I know all this now when I didn't know it? hours before happens for me too see and it's like the sculpture yeah. he's the artist he's he's brushing away all like the debris and making it yep. back a clean canvas again that happens with me in drumming happens with me in taekwondo it happens especially in acting when i have like speeches i have to memorize um usually i don't have them fully memorized the first day and then i sleep on it come back and it's it's like clean as a whistle yeah it, it's just it, it 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 really is just like muscle memory almost. It just clicks. Yeah. It's like synapses are formed and. I, I there was this really interesting study I saw on short term memory versus long term memory. So you know when you have uh, what is it, those codes like the two factor authorization on like signing into your Gmail. Oh or yeah, something yeah. Like that. I'll look at that authorization code once and not try to do it from one time to kind of work on my short-term memory mm -hmm. it's little things like that throughout the day mm -hmm. like maybe you're going grocery shopping look at the teller and try to when you go back to your car try to remember as much detail as you can from the teller and stuff like that to yeah. kind of like build up that memory i don't know it might work there was a it's study the, that shows it works so. i mean it's the pretty much the same principle of like we were talking about anthony hopkins just memorizing a sonnet a day or a week was yeah. it yeah yeah yeah, a week, uh, definitely a week. I've been lucky enough now, now with auditions coming back in for some good stuff coming in. Yeah, so me too. That's great. I can't, I mean, I can't, obviously, yeah. we both can't talk about anything, of course, but yeah, things are starting to pick up now. Yeah. I had a great, I had a great, actually, audition. I was telling a little bit to Peyton about it earlier, Yeah. but it was very challenging for me. This, It was seven pages, mm. and I had another audition that I had to prep first and I remember reading the seven pages and not not understanding the story because as you know sometimes when they give us an audition to keep things a secret they will give you very minimal information about the overall story and just give you sides and a brief character description and the sides are so technical that I'm like I don't know what's going on so now I have to make up everything and it was so at times frustrating because I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know. And I can't go into the room because if I'm with a casting director, if there's something I don't understand, I go, hey, what is this referring to here? Is this referring to something else that happened? And usually they answer me. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. Now I can do this thing. But I have so many questions and I'm like, all right. So I just kept reading it over and over and over and over again. And finally, little things that I've read 10 times over, never found that one little thing in there. And I'm like, oh, now it makes sense. Analyzing is crucial, especially when you get auditions for like, for stuff like, um, I remember like years and years and years ago, I auditioned, um, for this thing. I had no idea what it was. There's was so much backstory involved and like all these made up names. Like I could tell that it was something big, but they were like trying to cover it up by like renaming different names. There's a lot of backstory. I had no idea what it was for. And I really had to like break it down and analyze and pick up on those little things. And then, I, and then finally I was like, oh, this makes sense. And I can talk about what it is now because it was like 10 years ago almost. Um, it was for freaking Iron Man, dude. I was like, no way. Of course they would cover it up. 
and now it makes sense with all the backstory. Like it was between uh, it was between Robert Downey Jr. and the kid in Iron Man three. Oh. And I was like, oh, that's what it was. Because I remember when I finally watched that movie, like two years later after that audition, I was like, wait, this is so familiar. Like the, the pattern of the words that, uh, and then it clicked. I was like, oh, now it makes so much sense. Isn't that the, isn't that the craziest thing? I, that happened to me with a TV show. Yeah. And I'm, I'm watching, I'm like, man, this sounds so familiar. I don't know why. And I'm like, oh yeah, audition for it. <laughs> Hey, agent, did I get it? No? No? Okay. okay. I'm watching it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Can we take a break? Yes. Everything okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's take a break. Break. Well, I'm so glad you came back for another episode. I'm I content. You're happy. So this was so I'll see you later. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'm really, I'm actually really glad I got to be back on. It's always Thank fun. Uh, it's a nice chill session, honestly. Yes. It's nice 100%. just to talk, be goofy, talk about serious things. And uh, I can't wait for this project that you're doing in December with yeah. these kids because maybe sometime in the new year after you've done it, we'd love to talk to you back again about it because I yes. think that's so important to see the, the effects that we'll have on these kids, especially since quarantine will still be happening, COVID, yeah. everything. And, um, yeah, do you have any special plans before the year's out? Um, Other than filming oh the man. show? Well, yeah, that, that and also, um, okay, my, uh, my, my, my family in Michigan, right? My, my cousin, Vinny, not the movie, but the actual guy, he started this trend with my brother and I where one day in spring break of last year, I believe, I was walking home from school on, I was still in high school at that time. I was walking home from school uh, on, on a, on a freaking Tuesday. Like I wasn't expecting anything. And he, and, and some dude was like walking behind me and I was like, what, what's happening? And I was about ready to throw down. Like, I felt like he was really stalking me. Yeah. And I see a hand grab my shoulder, and I spin around, and it's Vinny. And, he's, and he, quotes, he quotes Goodwill Hunting, and he's like, it's not your fault. <laughs> and I freak out. I'm like, what are you doing here? Like, I didn't, he, he said, I've been planning this for two months, man. Your mom knew. Your, like, everyone knew, and you didn't know. I, I surprised you. So then I did the same Last time when I was on the podcast with you, when I left the next day, I did the same to him. I hadn't told him I was coming, and I surprised him. So I, I'm getting the feeling that he's going to come surprise me this December again, and that's the plan. You got to get him I'm, back. I'm predicting it. This is my 2020 prediction. You got to get him back. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a back and forth thing. Dude, put Lysol in his drink. Okay. And then when he's like in the hospital, and I'm like, oh, my stomach. And the doctor's like, we don't know what it is. You can yeah. be like, it was me. It's my fault. <laughs> Murder. <laughs> so, so what? what <laughs> Peyton. That's a good what, one, man. I, this is actually a really funny, epic prank, YouTube prank challenge, YouTube challenge prank that you could do to Peyton. Um, you could just like beat the crap out of him and film it. We did that last like, week. Prank. Yeah, that's true. We actually did that last week. Yeah. All right. Really quick, really quick. Like no. back and forth. Let's okay. just like let let's start YouTube trends, epic YouTube pranks, epic mealtime muffin, epic bacon YouTube okay. pranks. Epic construction site. All right, epic construction site where you go and you knock over all these construction buildings that con construction workers have been working on for uh, three years. Terrorist. Okay. <laughs> all right, go. <laughs> hey. Oh, we're yeah, still go, doing go, this. Go. Okay. Yeah. Um. Epic, epic supermarket raid. Okay, epic super... <laughs> like Vikings. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> so, oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoa. Buildings, yeah. Wait. We got Al-Qaeda over here, but we're like, steal a... 
Yeah, steal a banana. No, no, no. Wait, what? Al-Qaeda? What are you talking about? I wasn't referencing that. <laughs> what are you talking about? You That's like on the <laughs> South Pole side of things I was talking about. No, it's not the same thing. No! It's like a freaking Walmart's being constructed and you just knock it down. It's like, ha! And you look at the camera like, guys, guys, I just pranked them. No way! I'm not talking about a freaking national disaster over here. <laughs> no, because it's actually happened already. What do you mean? They raided a supermarket? Yeah, the riots, man. We need no, a, we no, need a, we need a, oh yeah, oh, Al-Qaeda, that's exactly what I'm talking about, oh, the riots, that's what you're talking about, get out of here, Wee Sam, you suck. Dude, we couldn't have been more on different pages with this whole bit. And oh, so you're talking about riots, sweet, I was talking about Al-Qaeda, no way. God. <laughs> Woo! What a way to end this show. How about we end it all with uh, you guys? You do an epic prank, you, epic YouTube challenge, eat a sandwich challenge, make a sandwich and eat it in a half hour. This is gonna be our trend every time you're on the show. <laughs> epic, extreme, and yeah. extreme. Just guys, do one jump in the air and land on the ground. Oh, that's yeah. an epic challenge. Uh, guys, pick up an egg and hold it for one second challenge. How about this? Okay. Pick up an egg, hold it for 12 hours. That sucks. Epic. <laughs> epic. That's, that's not epic. epic dude. That's <laughs> dude, that's epic. That's e what is it with these stupid challenges? I'm going to eat two bananas and drink a liter of Sprite. And, like, of course they vomit. Like, uh, uh, put a spoonful of cinnamon in my mouth. Of course they choke and they pass out. Like That, that <sighs> I don't... That's somebody who wouldn't survive in the wild. I did that. <laughs> And I, there, there is a there I, is a YouTube video of an old man who's got like a ZZ Top beard, and he's like, "I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put liquid uh, ghost pepper in my vape pen," and he vapes ghost peppers. I love that video. He almost it's died. Really he almost died. He's like sitting there choking. He's he's like choking. His eyes are bloodshot. He's crying, and he's like hacking out like these disgusting loogies of ghost pepper juice it like he keeps, it. He keeps it, yeah he goes in for like he, <laughs> like this is we've run the human race has run out of things to do let's just go back to minecraft all right let's go back to minecraft uh, that no, that that Epic Minecraft prank. Your little brother's playing minecraft and you take a sledgehammer and smash his computer prank Hey, <laughs> legit question. Okay. I just popped into my head. How All far right. down can you dig? Uh, to bedrock. So, like, the the number of blocks varies. It just depends on, like, the world, how the world generates. Um, but once you get to bedrock, which is, like, this this uh, material that looks like TV static, basically, you can't break that. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Mm -hmm. All right, you know what, Peyton? You going to play Minecraft? I'm yeah. kind of worried. I'm kind of nervous to play it. I don't know why. I don't know why I get nervous playing a new you'll game probably in front get, of people. You'll probably get scared. One, I actually unironically say this. One of the most scared times I like one of the one of the scariest moments in my life was when I was playing Minecraft. Yeah, and I can say that without any regret because that's probably one of the stupidest things I've ever said. But I'll tell you why. I was just strolling along in a cave. And sometimes Minecraft does... You know what I'm talking about? Like the scary Minecraft noises that just randomly play for no reason? Out, yeah, like... the the Yes, that. Endermen are these tall, demonic creatures that if you look directly in their eyes, they'll just teleport all around you and scare you and scream in your face. What? In the game? Yeah, they'll kill you. Um, they'll just beat the shit out of you. Yeah. Die. Yeah. But sometimes Minecraft just like play these. <laughs> these crap. Your lip quiver and your eyes weld up. One of the scariest things that Minecraft does is it just plays these random scary noises. Like you'll just be going along. It's like. And you're like. What? What was that? Like there's nothing around you. They just do that for no reason. Just to scare the player. It sucks. So I, I, I recently have two scary games I played. Uh, one of them was by myself, and one of them was Peyton. We played Fan Fantas 
phasmophobia. Oh. You got to check that video out. It's actually one of my favorite videos that we've done. And it's like basically photographing ghosts, right? Yeah. yeah. We had an epic moment during during the an last epic gamer moment. Oh, it was <laughs> it, it was horrifying for me. Uh, here's the thing. I invest I I suspend my disbelief so much when I play these scary games, Jacob, mm -hmm. that I get I get heart palpitations by the end of it. I'm not exaggerating. Yeah, no. I get scared of games all the time, dude. Like, yeah. I played Call of Duty, like, I was just, we were talking about it earlier mm. in the yeah. podcast, Zombies on the oh, new Cold War. It's terrifying. Really? Okay. No, it's not? Okay. Um, you know the Upside Down World? Yes. You know what I'm talking about, right, Peyton? Yeah. And Zombies? Yeah. Oh, and Zombies? Oh, They no, basically I don't know haven't... There's like a portal that brings you to the upside. It's basically the upside down world, and they even have Christmas lights, and and then like hellhounds just chase you. Mm. These rotting on fire dogs trying to kill you. You think you could uh, take on a, a hellhound one? One hellhound in real life? Yeah. All right. Well, here's the scenario. We're sitting here, right? A hellhound comes bursting through the door. Takes out Peyton first. Says bark, bark. Yeah. Uh, like immediately takes out Peyton. There's just like no chance. I've left. It's only you and the Hellhound. Okay. Well, shit, that changes everything. Yeah. So you're gone. Yeah, I'm you, gone through that door. Yeah, that door. You, you, you uh, Spider-Man webbed out. You're yeah, gone. Okay. It's just you um, and he looks And you had Spider-Man powers the whole time and you didn't help me. So thanks, man. Got to keep it real. Um, and got to keep it realistic. And the Hellhound's there. It's me. Um... I think I would just die, and that's my hypothetical. Wow. Like, no. Yeah. Do we have? Do I have a shotgun? Because then I could easily sure. win. Two shots. Poof, poof. Done. Okay, Done. then. That's boring. But if I just if it was just me, then I mean obviously I just power up and um, kind of mail wave. But yeah. Oh, I oh guess. yeah, they yeah. do. Oh, I was gonna say I was gonna grab it by like let it bite me and then grab by by its jaw and then rip its jaw open. Wait, are you suggesting that you have the the raw power to <laughs> rip off a hellhound's jaw while it's biting you? Let me tell you something, Jacob. That this is, is not, so specific on. and so unrealistic. J Jacob, this is not what? You're yeah, I'm not talking about hellhounds right now. This is not a bit. This is not a bit, and I know I say that a lot of times. Guys, this is not a bit. All right, I'm now being 100% serious, Jacob. Mm -hmm. If a coyote ever yeah. attacked me in the wild... And I grab the hold of its jaw and its skull. I would rip off that jaw. I feel like that would actually happen, though. Because, like, That's putting humans in those situations is summon this unworldly strength. I remember... Uh, I got so intense there. When I, I was, actually got adrenaline yeah, rush a little bit. Yeah, yeah. now you can actually kill a hellhound. Um, I remember when I was in Michigan... Uh, yeah. Dude, <sighs> this, is, this is my face. This is gonna, should this be the screenshot? <laughs> All right, there we go. We've done it. We got the thumbnail. So we got the thumbnail like millions of times. We have like millions of thumbnails. When I was in Michigan last month, when I was here, votes last time. Uh, there's a, 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 a coyote in my uh, uncle's backyard. Okay. Just strolling through. Yeah. And I was like, okay, what? And I've never seen anything so gross in my life. You've mm. never seen a coyote in real life. They're like these super like skinny gremlins that are like constantly like twitching and they want to kill something. Mm. It's disturbing. And then moments later, a full grown elk majestically strolls through the backyard as well, Whoa. which was really cool. That's so beautiful. Coyotes man. are scary though. They are... They're scavengers. They're scavengers. I'm not as scared of a coyote as I am a wolf or a mountain lion or no, a bear. No. I'd rather take on a few coyotes, to be completely honest with you, than any wolf, puma, or bear solo. Yeah, no, there's no chance against any of those three. But the coyote, pro no, for sure a human could beat a coyote. There yeah. was a report uh, that, that came out like a, a couple months ago where um, this coyote killed this guy's daughter's cat. Yeah. Like, this guy owns a farm, and he's got, like, his baby girl. The baby girl has a pet cat, and the coyote killed the cat. Yeah. And the, the, the guy hunted down the coyote and killed it with its bare, with his bare hands. What? Yeah. With his bare hands? With his bare hands. He strangled the coyote. 
he found the coyote and he's like wow. this really stocky dude and he just like strangled the coyote and killed it. Wow. And he's like, this is for killing my, my daughter's cat. My thing is dude. how the hell did he get a hold of it? it either it had to attack him because you can't chase a coyote. You can't. They're too fast. No. No, you can't. So but it must have been an attack situation. It was a full report. Wow. The uh, forensics came in and they were like, yeah, this coyote was strangled. No question about it. By human. Jeez. What? <laughs> just Eric Andre. Just gonna, yeah. just in a bear on a leash. I would be terrified. I'd literally be like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, whoever left has to go touch the bear. <laughs> has to go that's touch the bear. Epic, right? that's, that's an epic prank. Yeah, if you laugh, you gotta go touch the bear. That's yeah. an epic prank, dude. Yeah. Well, <laughs> one of the things I really want to do for my next guy's night is to actually bring in an animal wrangler and mm-hmm. bring in an ostrich. Into the studio. Ostriches are very hostile, dude. Are you aware? I am 100% aware. Okay. I have a friend who is terrified of any animal. Very jumpy. Yeah. And Shit. if an ostrich turned the corner, oh, that would be the best me, me. YouTube video <laughs> on the internet. Oh, dude. Yeah. That, we'd have to lock that door. <laughs> It's the 40 only, parakeets in a room? So he was turning 40 for his birthday, and I was this close to actually doing this. I was going to go to PetSmart and buy out 40 parakeets. And in that room right there, I was oh. going to go, uh, hey, Jante, I wanted to wish you a happy 40th birthday. Bring in the parakeets. You told me about Jante. Yeah. Last podcast. Oh, you are invited next year, whenever oh, okay. this COVID thing is done, to the live, to the live episode with audience live of guys night and i wanted to invite you because i know you have some good kicking prowess oh yeah uh one of our punishments for probably one of our no laughing segments wait i gotta kick a dude in in the butt oh okay i mean he's not gonna die or get hurt but it's gonna be a hard kick you gotta make sure no like, it's he's hard. gonna get hurt <laughs> perfect that's what we want he's gonna get but hurt. can you come in in your full like gi gi yeah and like headgear and everything if you want headgear you can but like i want you to kick i think it would be really cool if as i had like the um, i have a miyagi do headband dude and i could wear my gi with my would black you belt be a wheel. here's the thing here's the thing with this mm-hmm. um we do the no laughing punishment game and we had a gimp come in and and like whip us last what? time yeah like he had face mask and everything it was yeah you have to watch this i mean it's not like i enjoyed it i just you know yeah no, but seriously. It's just a prank, dude. Um, we've shocked each other, but yeah, we're going to go really epic, and in honor mm-hmm. of the Japanese you know, laughing games that we've seen in the past. Uh, oh, yeah, where mo- they just go like whipped in the nuts? Yeah. Uh, but this one, they used to have a Muay Thai, they called it Thai kick punishment, and a, a real Thai fighter would come in and kick them in their ass, Why and the pain is unbearable. Yeah. And so that's what I think it would be so appropriate for a Taekwondo <laughs> black belt See, you know, you know the the fun thing about me doing that is that I don't have to worry about getting kicked in the ass because yeah. I'm gonna be the one doing. No, it. you you don't get hurt at all. You kick us. Yes. I just you kick us. my ligament again. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Oh, the on there. <laughs> like ah 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 ah. ah. Dude, <laughs> I would be crying, laughing. And then you still have to go through because he's laughing. You've got to. I got to. You, you know. See, then it would cycle. suck. But you know, Isaiah. Because I've seen Isaiah's butt, unfortunately, during uh, okay. after our guy's night. I've seen all of them. Now yeah, after actually. Our guy's night. Like our oh. ass was blue. It was mine was welted blue from the Wait, hits. are you actually, are you serious? Yes. Blue? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was Bruce. Pretty they butt. Were, it hurt. It, it got to the point where <clears throat> I was getting chills because it was hurting so bad. And I was screaming toward the end of it because the guy hitting us was going all out. And I was just like. Was this a real gimp? It was a friend, dressed up as Gimp, but we a real Gimp. But they didn't know who he was. A real Gimp Shit. in its natural. So for people watching this, can we just play the the clip where he just comes in? Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna pretend where like I see it. Here's my reaction. All right. That was no. That definitely wouldn't be your reaction to it. All right. Here's my real reaction. <laughs> Hey, thanks for coming on, man. I know you're busy today. 
no. <laughs> yeah, I'm busy. No, uh, seriously, thank you so much uh, for coming on. This was so much fun as usual. Hopkins Jake. Instagram. Instagram. Hopkins Jacob 5. On Twitter. On Twitter. Make sure you follow him. Stay up to date with his new show coming out next month. And um, yeah, man, best of luck with everything. And we'll hit you up if I don't see you before the holidays. Yes. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. All the things. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Merry Thanksgiving. Christmas. Happy yep. New Year. Peyton, play us out. Good evening. Good day. Good night. There you go. Thank you, Adobe Radio. Thank you, Nice Guy Digital. Thank you, Peyton. Thank you, Alex. Thank you to all of our new subscribers. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well. We really appreciate every one of you guys. And always remember to listen, think, and then talk. Bye. What's that? <laughs>